have a little technical problem with a box that sort of doesn't want to go away. So if uh, you think there is a design flaw, it's actually that box we have tried to hide up there in the corner. <laughs> so, but uh, thank you for letting me be here. Uh, it was a fantastic presentation. So I will try to follow up with a, well, anyway, at, as good. <laughs> so uh, you're obviously an API lover and an API thinker. I'm not here today specifically because I'm extremely good in APIs or because I love APIs. I, I think it's a really good tool, but I'm specifically here today. I asked to be here today because I'm really fascinated by API developers. And I want to tell you a story about what you have meant for me and my company and how you changed something big that was ongoing during the year and make us, and we are a sort of a super tanker when it comes to changing course, you know, takes a while. So, uh, but you made us change course and we did it, had to do it extremely rapidly. So that's the story I would like to bring to you today. So I'm responsible for making Nodea PST2 compliant. So I have a lot of millions of euro to run a project to create the APIs that is needed for PST2 and so on. We started already a year ago with buying an API management platform and then we started development during last autumn. I found out that uh, people had problem with focusing both on compliance and maybe looking at opportunities. So just before Christmas, I had to tell the project, from now on, next year, you're only doing compliance because we need to have everything in place by the end of 2017. Because by then we thought actually that the technical stuff needed to be there already from January 2018. If you are updated with uh, what's happening, you should know that things have changed. The industry have realized that the technical stuff maybe doesn't have to be there until, well, now it sounds like September 2019, actually. But back then, we thought that we needed to be compliant by the end of this year. And they sort of hated me for it because uh, it's uh, not so fun to do compliance as it is to do revenue creating stuff. But I said, we have to wait to the, be the new stuff. We'll have to come later, over a year from now. And finally, that was the course we set out on. And then the plan was, as you can see, to start beta testing uh, in February, sort of, for these uh, PST2 APIs. So we knew that this was happening exactly as you have described it, that there is something remarkable happening in the financial industry, comparable to what has happened in telecom and so on. But we maybe, we didn't see exactly the power in it, how urgent it was. But, so when we started to, we put up a, an internet page, that was actually our first delivery to production, we put up an internet page where external developers and companies could sign up to be beta testers of our API platform. We had expected to maybe get 50 signups and then we would pick 15, 20 of those to be our core beta testers. Within 72 hours, we had 300 signups. And, and it was totally amazing uh, and we didn't really know what was happening. Uh, a couple of days later, I visited the Stockholm Fintech Hub. I talked to guys there and, and uh, they told me, you are the only ones that are talking to the Fintechs. No other banks are doing it. And the only thing we had done was that we had put up a sign-up page and we talked about our open banking ideas and so on. But it was totally amazing the response we got from the market all the, the enormous cheerful comments they made when they signed up and talked about, we want to do this with you. 
it was a fantastic thing and and it was you know when this happens i immediately felt that now we have created an expectation in the market not that we will deliver some really crappy compliance apis by the end of this year we have created an expectation of something much more and you know we could see we could imagine these developers standing outside the gates of the bank just screaming for our attention and you know it just kept coming so when we closed the sign up page there were 700 plus sign ups of course, there were other banks, there were financial consultancies, there were ERP vendors, but there were at least 500 fintechs and, and external developers that just want to do, do stuff with our APIs and do stuff with us. So it was an amazing thing. And a couple of days later, we found out we need to respond to this. We need to do something that sort of matches their expectations. So we totally changed our plans. We started to do blogging, we started to send out newsletters to all the signups. We went around on a tour on the fintech subs and other places and made demos of our developer portal, which is, by the way, going to be an awesome developer portal because that is the KPI for, for <laughs> my project. <laughs> <laughs> and we decided to not only have 20 beta testers, but that ex actually every sign up become a beta tester. And now I, I heard yesterday we have decided to let anyone go up on our platform, regardless if they have signed up or not. So that, that, that's the next step that will happen. Because we have, I, I, I actually wanted to exclude the banks in the beginning, but the project managed to convince me it's either op open or not. It's, there is nothing in between. So we let everybody in. I actually think it was because they couldn't separate the different signups that they want, but that, that's another story. <laughs> and we decided to start co creating with third parties. And we had the plan to do that, but a year later. So this was a total change of our plans. Luckily, we have by then realized that the compliance needs were coming a little later. So we could actually postpone some of those deliveries for later on and do other stuff earlier. But in all honesty, I think many in the projects just added this on top of their already full work schedules. So we just worked quite much harder because it was so fun to sort of answer to this response. And it continues like that. We still get a lot of enthusiastic uh, responses because I, I can still feel that rest of the banks in the Nordics have taken quite a reactive approach. So I still m many feel that we are still the only one. To, and ma maybe it's a matter of size. Maybe it's banks like ING and BBVA and ourselves, you know, we, we, we can't take a reactive to this. We, we need to be proactive when it comes to PSD2 and open APIs. That's the only way forward. We need to take the losses it might be and compensate that with creating new revenue stream streams very much based on the co-creation opportunities. So my PSD2 platform is now turning into something completely different because we see that there is a perfect fit. We are, as I said, a slow super tanker. We, there is a lot of problems with being an old big bank. You carry around with a heritage of old systems. You carry around with systems that need to be as transaction stable as possible, just the idea. You know, I'm res I was responsible for our electronic banking systems up till a month ago. I had one system, I could get four releases a year, and that was a good year. I want to have 40, maybe 400. I heard that the mobile lab on, on, on the 
mobile payment side, they could release every day. And I was so jealous. That's where I want to go as well. That's where we want to be in my area. And, and then in my area, when I say my area, we are, we are mainly focused on the corporates. But we would like to do that for the households as well. So we want to be like this, like these guys. Have all these features, but and use the things that we have that we are strong at. Because it's still so that many of the customers out there feel customers out there feel that it's the banks that are trustworthy, that are secure, and we are definitely compliant. We spend a lot of euros on becoming compliant. We have muscles, we have the customers. I mean, if you start the fintech now, okay, you will quite quickly, if you have a good idea, you will get 3,000 or 30,000 customers. You will get the, the tech savvy and you will get the millennials. But then, what then? How do you get the ordinary people to move from the old incumbent bank over to you, your new fancy solution? Well, the, the, the answer is that to grow organically with whatever product you have in this, it will take ages. It has taken ages for us to come to the level of 10 million plus customers. Parts of my bank has existed since the 1800s. And you don't grow that customer base overnight, especially if you're not willing to invest in the sales core, especially if you're just a, a bunch of developers who love to develop and love or passionate about new technology and so on. So we can offer all that stuff if you guys offer this. And, and to be full honest, I'm not so interested in fintech products or I'm interested in the brains. I'm interested in the developers because that's what we want to get at. Those are the ones, ones we want to team up with. And that's why I'm here today talking to you. Because you are the guys that we want to meet very much going forward. So I have a vision for my previously known as a PSD2 platform, that it will become a marketplace for solutions. We, have, uh, we are ahead of the curve here in the Nordics. I can't say that we are started as early as ING, but in, in this geographical area, I can definitely feel that we have taken a technical lead. We would like to keep that. And I think there is only one that can take the role of being the big marketplace. And we want to be that one. We, we have sort of a Spotify strategy when it comes to open APIs. So we are willing to invest and maybe take some losses now just to get to this position. So we are running very fast towards it. And as you can see, there are many places on this marketplace where there are third-party actors, where there are partners working. There are partners that consume APIs. There are partners that build apps on APIs. There are partners that build APIs for others to build apps on, and so on. And there are connectivities to other API networks in this. I mean, here the sky is, of course, the limit. Why should we talk about banking at all? Because that's the thing with the API, it will remove banking from the financial service. It will make financial service to become a component in more comprehensive services. That's the whole thing. I'm actually an old developer myself from back in the days. I can see that the old idea of machine to machine communication is coming to, li to live here. I mean, I've been responsible for file transfer services for electronic banking. That's so outdated. It's sort of technology from the 70s. This is new. This will actually make it. This will make us the possibility to integrate with other service providers that are, that are non-financial and create the service for the customers end-to-end which I think is exactly where banks need to go. And also the reason why banks 
redefine themselves as technology companies. And you see, this should of course be an awesome. <laughs> and now it's not the developer portal anymore. Now it's actually an ecosystem portal going forward. So that was, oh, I'm ahead of the time actually, four minutes, two minutes left. But that was actually my last slide. So I hope this <laughs> story has, have you found that a bit annoying anyway. So thank you for your time. <laughs>